Welcome back to Cryptos R Us. I am George. We're all George. So, things are looking much better today. Bitcoin is above 38,000. It's looking good. It's looking strong. All coins are coming up. However, we have some dire warnings about Bitcoin and crypto winter from the banks. Some of the major banks out there is giving you, the people, a warning about crypto winter i'll let you think about that for a second <laughs> what are their motivations right so let's discuss what's going on with bitcoin what's coming up for this week and what the banks really feel about bitcoin and crypto winter let's discuss these things today so smash the like subscribe to the channel two streams almost every day 11 30 and 8 30 p.m central standard time make sure you hit that notification bell and follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and check out all the latest news, article, and guides at CryptoZeros.com. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is a good day. Today is a good day. So you could see, man, remember last night, those of you guys that tuned in, I said, oh, you know, we had that, we had that, that, that fake, you know, fake out pump. To the upside and all of a sudden we dump back down right and since then we've been kind of going sideways until this morning boom we started climbing now we're above 38.5 and if i zoom out a little bit we're pressing against this uh important resistance i would say i'm gonna draw a line here because it's pretty obvious that this is a point right now that that we haven't been able to break for a while since uh since this point over here January 21st, which wasn't that long ago, a few weeks ago, but you can see over here, couldn't break this 38.5 mark over here, here a few times, and we are right there right now. So short term, if we can break above and hold above this and build momentum over here, that is definitely a good step in the right direction. Okay, so we're pressed up right against it. Uh, today, what caused this? Well, Pretty obvious. Uh, overall, the, the equities market is doing pretty good today, especially NASDAQ, especially NASDAQ. And that's important because there is this very tight correlation with tech stocks and NASDAQ overall as Wall Street uh, decides to buy back in. NASDAQ was oversold, over 20% drop in one month alone, which is a huge drop for an index like NASDAQ, right? But ever since, some earnings came out surprised people well now they're fomoing back in and it does seem like people are fomoing back into bitcoin as well but i've always made this argument bitcoin is not a tech stock even though it is correlated with bitcoin with tech right now that's because the wall street don't really understand they're treating it as a trade they're treating it as any other tech stock but it's not and that's their mistake we're treating it as investors only true investors the true holders are the ones that make true wealth, right? And that's what we're here to do is build wealth. And unfortunately, most of Wall Street does not understand that right now, but they will, they will. But in the short term, we have to kind of just go by what is going on. However, there are good stuff that's coming up this week. For example, starting from tomorrow, we got Mr. Saylor and MicroStrategy that is doing a conference about Bitcoin, Bitcoin for corporations. So this will be ongoing for a couple days. And of course, whenever this goes on, there's a lot more talk about Bitcoin, a lot more education, a lot more uh, wealth of knowledge being spread, right? This is a good thing. They, ha they had one last year. They're having a, this one. And it just so happens to be coming up during their earnings report. <laughs> so that'll be, that'll be quite interesting. So I don't know if that's the reason why they selected the dates, but I did mention this week, there's a lot of things going on. A lot of things. Uh, earnings is one of them. This is another one, right? Bitcoin for corporations. But speaking of earnings, you have some major players in the tech sector and in the crypto sector that's about to report. So that's important. First of all, you have Google, but Google hasn't been doing too well over the last year anyways. But you still have Google. You have PayPal. This is all coming tomorrow, by the way. PayPal is important. Because PayPal, of course, we know. Very, very invested in Bitcoin and crypto, right? They will release some telling numbers in terms of growth of users, growth of merchants, right? Growth of volume, trading volume, and number of holders, 
on the platform. I, I, I bet they're going to release some telling numbers. So PayPal tomorrow will be important. You also have AMD that's reporting tomorrow. And AMD, of course, is important because semiconductor for, uh, for half the video cards out there, right? That's not NVIDIA. But of course, the miners, they're snatching all of them up to mine, right? Regardless of prices right now because it's still very profitable to to be mining so amd will also tell a telling story about how they're forecasting this year will be how how short of a supply their gpus are right due to the miners due to supply chain shortage stuff like that that'll be very telling and of course micah strategy is reporting tomorrow too so that will be that will be interesting because we know MicroStrategy is already being looked at upon the SEC for their accounting practices, so they'll have to change that before their earnings. But let's see what they say. We, I, I kind of know what they're going to say. They're, the CFO already came out and said they're going to continue to buy Bitcoin regardless of the price action, which is the right thing to do. And you can't be flip-flopping at this point. You have to. <laughs> You have to keep saying that you're going to buy, right? You can't all of a sudden say, okay, we're going to stop buying Bitcoin from now on. That will be horrible, and uh, and I don't think they're going to announce that anyways. But, you know, there's a, there's a lot of interesting earnings coming out starting from tomorrow. And then Wednesday and Thursday, there's more Facebook with Metaverse reports. Thursday, you have, um, you have Amazon. Maybe they do something interesting. There's talks about you know them getting into crypto, but I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't bet money on on that event. But Activision, which is part of Microsoft, that will be a good one too because we'll see how good they're doing. And basically, one of the big reasons why Microsoft bought them was to get involved with Metaverse and then compete with Facebook. So that'll be interesting. Anyways, so we have a lot of earnings this week and. You know what, depending on how these earnings are, it could drive the markets up more and definitely drive Bitcoin and entire market up even more too. So we're off to a good start right now. We're definitely off to a good start. We're seeing, we're letting, we're, we're letting the market come to us. We're letting the gains come to us for now, right? We're not trying to chase. We're not trying to second guess ourselves. We are investing. We're staying for the long term, but it's nice to pay attention to these things, Right. However, however, I noticed that um, a lot of banks, a lot of banks recently issued dire warnings about Bitcoin. And I've always made this point. Do you really think that the banks care about Bitcoin and how it's increasingly vulnerable to Fed rate hikes as mainstream adoption grows? Do you really think they, they issue these statements to, to protect you or I or anyone uh, that is listening, uh, you, you got to think, <laughs> this is really, this is really um, like a PSA message. Like, hey, everyone, we're trying to save you from, from crypto winter. So we're going to release headlines like this, right? Or, or this. Uh, JP Morgan says uh, excessive volatility will hinder mainstream adoption. Right, the the bank that called Bitcoin to hit one hundred fifty thousand recently changed its fair value price to thirty eight thousand, and now they're warning about excessive volatility and how that's going to stop mainstream adoption. And and then we have UBS, which warns of a total crypto winter uh, amid uh, expectation of Fed right hikes. Right. So do these banks really? Do they really care, or do they have a hidden agenda? Right. When things were doing well, they would. Put the price really high, right? Get everyone to FOMO in. And now that things are low, they're trying to scare everyone off. It seems like they have an agenda. And the agenda is this. When things are low, you scare people off even more so that they can accumulate or maybe offer Bitcoin to their customers. Because every one of these banks now have custodian service and crypto trading service, right? And they are allowed as financial advisors to advise their clients to buy into Bitcoin funds and any Bitcoin offerings they have, right? So what's the reality here, right? I'm going to bet that uh, they are unintentionally uh, spreading FUD because it benefits them. 
And when I say unintentionally with quotes, meaning intentionally, right? So I think that's what's going on. I've always told you guys, don't follow the herd, right? Go against what everyone is thinking. And right now, everyone's thinking we're in crypto winter, that things are going to get really, really bad and things are going to get worse. And, and you know, you got to prepare for crypto winter. I just don't see that that's the case, right? All the metrics that still measure Bitcoin's activity and growth is still on the uprise. We may be in a bear trend, but we are not in crypto winter. We're far from it, far from it. So I, you know, I just want to point out there's going to be a lot of headlines and a lot of banks and institutions that may be warning you about a crypto winter, but what's their motive? What's their true intention? Everyone has an agenda. Their agenda is not to help you. It's to help them. So keep that in the back of your mind as you're reading some of these articles that are coming out. All right. Now, moving on from here. Well, what else is there? Uh, I think uh, some of you guys, right? Uh, some of you guys may not understand what's going on right now. So I, I, I want to make this point. Because some of you guys may have noticed that I've been talking a lot about this correlation with Bitcoin and NASDAQ and how traders are, you know, basically trading in tandem between the two, right? But here, here's the difference. This is why Bitcoin is not a tech stock, right? The growth curve, the adoption growth curve, right? Whatever you define it, it's still so early. If I had to define where we are in terms of this, right? We're, we're, we're probably at the end of innovators and the start of early adopters. I don't even think we're anywhere close, anywhere close in terms of even early majority or being at the top and coming down may, uh, late majority or laggards. We're nowhere close to that. And in terms of market share, we're also nowhere close to hitting the top. So we're still on our way in terms of grabbing market share from gold and number users we're still so far away how many people actually own bitcoin on the planet earth very very little amount even if you had 0.1 bitcoin 0.1 put you in the upper one percent of the world in terms of holders of bitcoin right so we are still so early and this is why we want to be in it that's why we want to be investors because we want to get in while this growth curve Right. While we're moving up this growth curve or adoption growth curve, not towards the end. And this is the difference between Bitcoin and everyone else. And, you know, to prove my point on Bitcoin overtaking gold, you see Bitcoin's market cap is 730 billion. At, at its peak, it was about 1.3 trillion. But 731 billion and you look at a top dog, which is gold at 11.4 trillion. That's a ways to go. We're nowhere close to that, not even 10%, right? 10% will put Bitcoin back above 60,000. So we have a lot of room to grow. And according to, according to many, including myself, Bitcoin is a better version of gold. It's a digital version of gold with none of the side effects. It's pharmaceutical gold, as Michael Saylor would say, right? And we know the world is embracing Bitcoin right now. But starting, it's early, so wait until that happens. <laughs> then we can judge whether or not Bitcoin is at top. We're nowhere close to it. We're nowhere close to it, right? So this is this is uh, my counter to people that feel like, oh, Bitcoin is not going to go anywhere because it's too, too controlled by Wall Street and, and this and that. No, no, we're still so, so early. All right, what else is there? Other metrics that support this case? The number of supply that's been holding for five to seven years, true holders continue to increase, except there was a big drop back when the miners got kicked out. And I think that a lot of miners were forced to liquidate, which is why there was a big drop. But you could see that the number of holders are increasing, right? This is adjusting. This is measuring adjusted dormant flow, which is kind of the same thing, basically looking at the long term holders and we're at that point where Bitcoin is at a low and it's about to reverse every single time. We hit this same kind of uh, same kind of point, I guess, when uh, looking at dormant flow. So that's pretty positive. These are short term things, right? So overall, my point is this Bitcoin 
may be in a slump, may be in a bear tread, but, but we are definitely continuing forward. We're moving higher, right? And you need to, you need to be in the game. Don't try to be like Wall Street and make reactive decisions and try to outsmart the market. You're going to fail that way. The only true and tested way to win at Bitcoin and crypto is simply by buying low and holding. That's really it. Now, speaking of other things within the crypto sphere in terms of buying and selling, well, guess what? Crypto, uh, cryptocurrency exchange FTX just received another huge investment round, $400 million, And now they are worth $32 billion. $32 billion. And Sam Bankman-Fried, who is only 29, is now valued at, what, 30? No, 20 something something billion dollars i saw something in here he is a one rich man but anyways this shows you that the appetite for crypto and crypto services and crypto exchanges is still high there's many that still believe of course that we are still very early in the growth trend growth curve and that you need to get in early right so ftx obviously they have ftx overseas and ftx US. They also block, they bought Blockfolio, so that's part of their portfolio now, and they have their own NFT marketplace, and they have many other things, right? They are growing by leaps and bounds, so they're definitely coming after Binance. That's, I think that's the goal right now, right? So it does show you that, yeah, a lot of money is still coming into the space. Speaking of Solana and Sam Bankman-Fried, Solana's wallet, Phantom, which is a browser-based wallet, has just raised $109 million after hitting a $1.2 billion valuation, right? Every single one of these companies seem to be hitting that B mark now. That's a lot of money. A lot of money coming into this space. This is why we are still early. Everything I've said about Bitcoin holds true to the rest of the altcoins and the L1s that are growing by leaps and bounds right now, right? If you look at short-term volatility, yes, you can measure from top to bottom. We may be off by 50 or 60%, but no one ever looks at from the bottom to, to where we are now where uh, millions of percents have been gained, right? People have a short attention span, and I get it because if you bought at top, that's all you care about, right? But just know that these projects have made tremendous tremendous growth within a very short amount of time they're still trying to figure out but since it's so early there's still a lot more growth to come all right so keep that in the back of your mind too uh what else is there um in terms of nfts nft volumes in january is the highest it's ever been so if you think that everything is down that's not true nfts are actually going up in value and the number of sales and volume is exploding, exploding in January, despite everything actually coming down. That's that's another telling story. There's a lot of people that's in the space that are not leaving, not leaving, not afraid that that crypto winter may be coming, which I don't believe in. But this kind of shows you how much money is in the space right now. A lot of goodness, a lot of goodness. And lastly, I want to remind you guys, don't be this guy. Well, Bitcoin has stabilized at almost exactly $14. I'm tired of waiting for a jump. So I'm taking a loss and getting my cash back uh, July 11, 2015. You could replace that with $38,000 right now, right? And it'll be the same thing. If you bought at $60,000, you bought at $50,000, you bought at $40,000, you may be feeling the same way. You replace this $14 and you replace it with $38,000 and it applies to many people out there, right? But usually when people do this, they take the loss, they panic sell, they give up, they regret it down the road. They always do, every single person. So don't be like Thomas Randolph. I have nothing against the guy, but uh, don't be like him, okay? <laughs> and lastly, uh, my partner, I Trust Capital, which allows you to buy and trade and, and hold all crypto. Well, they just added Axie Infinity which is the most popular play to earn game right now in the crypto sphere. So if you want to trade and not worry about taxes, utilizing a 401k or IRA, check out iTrust Capital. They are giving $100 rewards and they have a ton of crypto offerings right now. Utilize the link in the description. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. 
it's a good day. Good day overall. We're still holding at this point, right? We want to break above and utilize this as a support, and then then that'll look even better. So let's see. Let's see if that's gonna happen. Let's do some QA. Do you know what's going on with uh, VeChain is crazy stagnant? What's going on is you need to have more patience. Uh, that's that's really what, <laughs> what the deal is. You need to have more patience. Should I hold Luna? Yes, I love Luna. Uh, too much FUD. Too many people that are trying to spread FUD for no apparent reason. Mostly because they're jealous they didn't get in earlier. So now they're trying to bring it down. But Luna is just fine. Terra is just fine. Everything that's going on with Wonderland and Abracadabra, that is on them, not on Luna. They just decided to take advantage of UST uh, for their purpose. But yeah, it's a fine, fine project. Phil says, this ain't crypto winter. Phil knows. Phil was with me throughout the years since 2017. When, you know, it's it's truly crypto winter when you when you stay at a price for literally uh, six plus months and then to see a drop by 50 percent overnight. That's when you know you're in crypto winter. This is not crypto winter or not not anywhere close to previous crypto winter that we've been in right now. I'd say, yeah, I give it a bear trend. You're right. But don't listen to the banks. Don't listen to the fudders. I seem drunk yesterday. No, I, I actually have not been drinking that much recently. So i um, been trying to cut back on that. So once says Sam gives a lot of his money to charity too. Good for him. Good for him. Um, Mr. Select World, I appreciate that. I do. What do you think about Polygon? I do like Polygon. I do like them. They they have a lot of things going on. They have a, a huge war chest now, but they have so many projects turning to them because of Ethereum's uh, gas fees and congestion, right? And they are growing even faster than Ethereum at this point. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm, I am hitting the gym more, but not nothing crazy. My knee is still bothering me. Trying to slowly work that knee and trying to get in a better shape. Um, mana, Geostone, Mana, and Sand doing well. What do you think of the next Mana coin? I'm not really paying attention to the next Mana coin. I mean, the only one that... There's a few I heard of, like DeFi Land and Pavia. I think if you're a Cardano fan, Pavia is definitely the, the project to look at, but... They're still very, very early. Mana and Sand is still very early. As you guys saw, I started playing the Central Land, right? There's not a whole lot to do in the game. It's just mostly you got guys in there that's just like chatting away, right? Um, but it does show the potential of the platform, the, the potential metaverse. I don't think we're anywhere close to it. It's like a blank, blank, uh, blank canvas right now. Right, so there's a lot that's coming to both. And sand, I haven't tested out yet, but sand seems to be structured more differently. So you can create missions and games within the metaverse, right? So I I, I do want to test out sandbox. Um, my friend has held Litecoin at 130 since 2017. Refuse to sell no matter what I say. How do I prevent him to lose? <laughs> hey, you can, man. He's he's uh, he has ultimate diamond hands, right? But um, for the wrong project, I would argue. I mean, if you bought at 130, it's 106. It's not too far off. I mean, that's okay. And honestly, I think Litecoin will trend up when the market recovers again. So he's probably go see some green soon. But there are definitely much better projects now, which is why Litecoin has fallen so much. Litecoin used to be in the top 10. It used to be in the top 5. Then it followed the top 10, the top 15, now top 20, and now it's outside of top 20, and it will continue to fall. Even though you can make money from it, but it, I do believe it's going to continue to fall as more and more L1 surpass it. 
what do you think about NFTs of CyberKong? I have no idea. No idea about the NFT. I do have a really good uh, team member that writes on crypto are awesome about NFTs and you know, he's he's sending a lot of the important ones. I have not been able to keep up, but if you guys want to learn more about NFTs, you definitely want to check out CryptoZeros.com. Um, which good which coins have good return in 2022? Uh, that's that's a that's an open ended answer. Um, there's so many that will have great 2022s, but I like to stick with, of course, Bitcoin and the big L ones, the big caps, because I think they're going to have a tremendous upside in 2022 as well. And I do also want to add that I think gaming will have a big upside in 2022. It just depends on which ones catch on fire, right? Look at, look at how much Axie went up because it caught on fire. Now that it has come back down a little bit, right? But they went up like almost a million percent in 2021. And there's there'll be others like it too. Um, there's going to be many others like it. Games is on a different level, right? Games can go very, very viral, very, very fast. And there's many games that's coming out in 2022. So I do think games will do very well. Theta, you know, I just talked about Theta last night. They are doing their new Theta drop, T drop, that's coming um, actually tomorrow. That's going to be part of a new NF NFT push. Um, it's going to be like a liquidity token for NFTs and, and for streaming. So that's quite interesting. I still don't quite get the whole three setup, but they're going to try to figure it out. Skywalker says Sony buying Bungie for 3.6 billion. That there's no way. There's no way. Bungie is the main game maker from Microsoft. That doesn't even make any sense. Unless Microsoft decide to sell off Halo, which uh, again doesn't make sense. Um you think this is a more realistic bounce at 34 or 30k? I'll tell you this. Whenever one believes that it has to go to 30k, that's when it doesn't go to 30k. That's happened before. It happened when we hit 28,000 before back in July of 2021. Everyone is calling 20K. It had to hit 20K before we bounced. It has to, it has to. And we never did. The people that sat on the sidelines, you know, they were caught with their thumb up there, you know what, while waiting for 20K. And right now it's kind of the same way. Everyone's calling, oh, it has to hit 30K. Does it? Does it really? You know, you sometimes just don't know. They haven't worked with Microsoft. They don't work with Microsoft anymore. Then how did they come out the new Halo? Oh, Bungie and Halo already split. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Well, good for Sony then. Good for Sony. Hopefully, they they get in the metaverse space too. And that's the reason why they bought Bungie. Hopefully, that's the case. Do you know anything about Classic Doge? I'm set to do a segment on them. But they're all about uh, dog lovers, right? And creating NFTs for dogs. But I will talk about them in the future. Uh, did my super chat go through? I don't know, Forever Young. If I, I could see your regular chat. I didn't see your super chat. Um, Sony stock halted. Buy now. Solana, Avalanche, Luna, one dot near. This is all you need. That's a good That's a good lineup right there. I would say that's a pretty good lineup. Should add... add uh, you know what? You should add, yeah, Polygon. You're missing Polygon from that group. Do you think the new GTA will be in Metaverse? I don't know. It would be awesome if they made it in the Metaverse. But, you know, I, I'm hearing a lot of gamers are pushing back on Metaverse and NFTs in general. I don't think they quite get it. Um, but that new Unreal Engine, Unreal 5... That was released. I mean, that is an incredible engine. I mean, things are getting so realistic. If Decentraland looked like the new Unreal Engine, right? I mean, 
literally it would blow people's minds if you guys haven't seen that unreal engine demo with the new matrix game it will blow your mind how good they made the the you know the city look it's incredible hopefully decentraland or sandbox or one of these metaverses will get to that point i mean that it's just incredible anyways i gotta go uh overall bitcoin is doing good entire market is doing good right will this hold well we will see because we got some big stuff coming tomorrow right we got some big earnings we have micro strategy we have options expiration at the end of the week and of course there's a lot of fud that's still out there that's trying to drive things lower but think about it why would the banks and fudders really care if crypto winter is coming or why would they drive that and hammer that to you maybe because they have another agenda maybe because they want to buy they want to buy low trying to cause you to sell and you don't want to do that all right guys smash the like subscribe to the channel i'll see you guys tonight 8 30 p.m central standard time take care guys bye, -bye.